Simple and sleek, with a classic design, this handheld can stand with the greats, and this 353VS can be had for as little as $100. Subscribe. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Yumi Chicken, and today we're going to use our finger to open this package. Please don't use text to speech, it cheapens the channel. This package is pretty well protected. And inside that, we also have a bubble wrap. Can I pop them this time? Yeah, sure thing. Thanks. And this is it. The RG353VS. It's actually a lot smaller than I expected. Too easy, but I bet that's what she said. But looking at the box, this looks pretty nice indeed. She said that too. There's no sellotape on the side, so we can just pull this off. Inside the box, we have the handheld with some extra goodies at the bottom of the box. We have the wipes for the screen protector, USB-A to USB-C cable, the screen protector, and a manual. This opens up to be in English and Chinese. Honey chew. This foam here protects the buttons from damage. And here it is, the gray version of the RG353VS. Very, very plain. On the front, we got the D-pad, two analog sticks, front buttons, function, and start and select. Speakers down in the middle. And we've got a nice big screen. Yes, I will take an ice cream, strobo thanks. On the bottom, we have a USB-C input. That's for the DC power. We've got two micro SD slots. One on the top is for the system. And above that, we have the reset and power. On the top, we have headphone jack, mini HDMI, and USB-C. And over here we got volume rocker. Yeah. The shoulder buttons, none of them analog. The D-pad is very similar to a Super Nintendo controller. Very ambonic. The analog sticks are very similar to a Nintendo Switch. And they click. The face buttons are slightly clicky. And have a bit of grit to them. If you're holding this the normal way, it's pretty comfortable. But using these analog sticks, um, no. It's probably best to think of these as an extra. To our surprise, the shoulder buttons actually work quite well. If we don't use the sticks, this is a very comfortable device. So how big is this thing? It's a little smaller than the RG351V. Not as bony as the RG353P. These are kind of like siblings, you know? Well, let's go get something that looks kind of similar. How about the original Game Boy? Can you see how they look alike? Let's take a look at this. This is the Game Boy Pocket, and it's pretty much the same size. Look at this. Or if you want to see this in the same shot as the Retroid Pocket 3, well, here you go. And who can forget the tea bag? The screen of the 353P is roughly the same size as a Roy Bosch tea bag. The RG 353VS shares a lot with the 353V, but this is cheaper, has half the memory, no touchscreen, and no Android. Let's see how long this takes to turn on. Numbers are fun. I like to get the high scores in games. Pac-Man, Asteroids, or how many times in one day can I punch Wesley's stupid face? I and John Luke 69. All the time. Obviously the boot up time will change depending on how many games you have and if you have a faster micro SD. So the version we got was the cheapest one, the one micro SD at 16 gigabytes. And as you can see, we have pretty much an empty slate here. We can obviously add our own games, but there are a few homebrew games installed. Let's take a look. Reflectron. Santa Santan. 2048. I don't know what I'm doing. Space Twins. Doom. Mr. Boom. And Prince of Persia. I was always fairly good at this game. There we go, completed it. 
So this stays pretty cool at 38 degrees. And if we want to turn it off properly, we need to shut it down here. Once it's off, we can take out the micro SD. And yeah, it's a Toshiba. Interesting, because right now they're actually called Kyoxia. If we put this into our Windows computer, we can see a FAT32 partition. To add our games, we just copy our ROMs into one of these folders, or we could use a larger micro SD and put it in the other slot. Once the software sees the games, it'll add the menus automatically, and you're ready to play. Let's test this thing. We'll first start with some arcade games. This will play most things well, provided they don't use 3D. So games like Tekken or Killer Instinct, you can forget. You can also emulate computer systems. Here's the Atari ST. And Commodore Amiga. And even Fire and Ice actually runs quite well on this little system. Now for the benchmark, Jim Power. If we put frameskip to 1, this game will run at full speed. How about some MS-DOS? And also many ports are available. Here's ScumVM. Now let's move on to the consoles. Nintendo Game Boy runs really well, and at stock, the portable handhelds display a nice looking screen filter, which you can turn off. Here's Game Boy Advance. NES. The Super Nintendo. N64. As we all know, N64 will always be a hit and miss. It's not one emulator is perfect. For some games, there may be graphical bugs that we might be able to fix in the emulator options, but today, we'll keep all settings to default. Now for some Sega systems, here's a Sega Mega Drive. Sega 32X also runs perfectly. Here's some Sega Saturn. But unfortunately, 3D games do struggle somewhat. It's Sega Rally Championship. And now for some Dreamcast. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 runs quite well, but there is some minor graphical glitching with the supers. And as the D-pad is similar to a Super Nintendo, some people may find it difficult to do Hadoukens. And in Crazy Taxi, we found out that the RG353VS has a vibrator. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. We can turn it off by using the RetroArch options. Let's go to Quick Menu. Go down to Options. Then input. Then go down to the Puru Puru vibration pack. 
turn that off and we should be good to go. Daytona, USA. We can also play Naomi. Here's Marvel vs. Capcom 2 again, and it seems it's running a little bit better. But personally, I prefer playing this. A real Danbury sausage fest. Where is my ism? Sega or Thomas Wave? This one's King of Fighters 11. Moving on to some Sony now, here's Tekken 2 for the PlayStation 1. And a favourite for the PSP, Outrun 2006, coast to coast. Without frame skip, it's pretty unplayable. But if we flick that to one... Yeah, there is a little slowdown every now and then, but it's certainly playable. Same again goes for Wipeout Pulse. Turn on the frame skip. There is noticeable slowdown when you see explosions in this game. There is one more thing you can do with this device. In the p -p -p settings, changing from buffered to non-buffered will improve the experience significantly. Then frame skip to one. So outside the lines at the top and the bottom, PSP at one times resolution is pretty playable on this machine. Connecting this handheld to a TV works as expected. And the display is very nice and bright. The viewing angles are excellent, and more than likely it shares the same display as the 353P. Noticeable differences between these two are the form factor and the speaker. The one in the V or VS shoots straight at your face in mono, whereas the P has stereo speakers. Outside that, they're very similar. As for only having one gigabyte of memory, we've only seen slowdown in PSP. All of the other systems we've tested run at the same speed. So I think it's about time for the pros and the cons. The RG353VS is the best bang for buck at under $100. It's comfortable, plays up to Dreamcast, and it's pick up and play as soon as it gets to your door. We couldn't really find much wrong about this handheld, but we can't ignore how dull and boring this unit looks in grey. Translucent black would definitely spice this up. So what do you think about this handheld? Is it the one for you? Or are you going to sit back and relax to see what else Hambenic have in store before Christmas? As always, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Thank you. We can't thank you enough. We'll continue to make video reviews like this, as well as video guides, and fixing the a Mini and them cheap Chinese arcade boxes. I would love to have a cheap Chinese box come to my door and some pretty girls pop out of it. They'd all be saying we love you John Luke, let's play Moonstone on your Mega 500. I would then hand them my joystick. <laughs> you can't say that. I just did. <laughs> so if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. And this has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Laba laba guy, I'll catch you soon.